Hello and welcome back. So in the last lecture, we created our very first Angular project. So we have our Angular project ready with all the required files and folders and also the dependent packages. And when we run that Angular project, it looks something like this. Here, let me go ahead and let me zoom out a little bit, maybe 200%. So this is how our Angular application looks currently. So this is the default look of the Angular project when we first create it. And now we can go ahead and we can edit the look and feel of this project. But before I do that, let me show you one thing. So currently this project is running at localhost port number 4200. And we are able to access this web page on localhost port number 4200 because in the last lecture, we run this ng serve command. Okay, so first we move to the project folder and in that project folder, we run this ng serve command. Now, what this ng serve command does is it runs a process behind the scenes. And as long as that process is running, we will be able to access this web page on localhost port number 4200. And if we kill that process, that means the process which is currently running when we run this ng serve command, in that case, we will not be able to access this Angular application on this URL on localhost port number 4200. Let me actually show you that. So here I am going to kill the process and in order to kill the process, we can simply press control C on the keyboard. So now the process has been terminated. So now if I go back to browser and if I refresh the page, now we should not be able to access this web application at this port number because now we have killed the process. So the process is no more running. And because of that, we are not able to access the Angular application on this URL. But if I go ahead and if I start that process again by running the ng serve command. So keep in mind that in order to run your Angular project, first you need to move to the project folder. Okay, this is my project folder path. So this is that path. Inside this Angular eCart folder, we have our all the project related files and folders. So this Angular cart here, it is my project folder. So using command prompt, first I need to move to that folder, that project folder. And in there, I need to type ng serve command in order to start the Angular CLI process. So if I press enter, it will again compile the project. It will create some bundles and it will start the process. And then we will be able to access the Angular application again. So you can see the project has been compiled. The bundles have been created. And now that Angular process is started. And since the Angular process has started now, it is running. We can go back to the browser. And now you can see we are able to access the Angular application at this URL, localhost port number 4200. So in case, if you are not seeing this web page when you are typing this URL, localhost port number 4200, that means your development server is not running. And in order to start your development server, you need to go to your project folder. And in there, you need to type this ng serve command and start the Angular CLI process. And then you'll be able to access your Angular application at this URL. All right. Now, in order to proceed further in this course, we need a code editor, which we will use to make changes in our Angular project. So in this course, I'm going to use VS code as my code editor. If you have any other preferences, if you want to use any other code editor like Atom or Sublime, you can go ahead and you can use that. But if you want to follow along with me in this course, then you can also go ahead and download VS Code code editor because that's what I'll be using in this course. So let me go ahead and let me open a new window here. And here, let's search for VS Code. Okay, and you need to go to this first result code.visualstudio.com and from here you can download VS code on your local machine. Now in order to download VS code on your local machine you need to click on this download button. So here you can see the operating system has been selected automatically. In my case I am using Windows so that operating system has been selected automatically. In your case your operating system will be selected here. If you are using Windows then it will say download for Windows. If you are using Mac OS it will say download for Mac OS or if you're using Linux, it will say download for Linux. But in case if your operating system has not been selected, then you can also click on this drop down. And from here, you can select your operating system. And then you can go ahead and you can click on this download button in order to download VS code in your local development machine. 
So when you will click on this download button, it is going to download an MSI file. Let me actually show you that. So if I click on this download button, it is going to download an MSI file, this exe file. Okay, now all you have to do is, once this exe file is completely downloaded, you can double click here, or you can go to the downloads folder, and from there, you can double click on this exe. It is going to open an installation window. Just follow along the installation steps. It is very easy. There is nothing complex in that. Just follow the installation steps and install this VS code on your local development machine. Now, once the VS code is installed on your machine, you can just go ahead and open VS code. If you are on Windows, in the search bar, you can type VS code and you can click on that. So it will open VS code. When you will open it, you will see this welcome screen. Now, what we want here is in VS code, we want to open our Angular project folder. Okay, for that, you can go to file, open folder, and then go to the location where your project folder is located. In my case, it is in documents folder. In there, we have this Angular complete course folder. And in there, we have our project folder called Angular eCart. So I will select this project folder and I will click on this select folder button and it will open that project folder in VS code. Let's close this welcome screen here. All right, so here we have opened our Angular project in VS code. Now, the next question which will come to your mind is when I'm running this Angular project in the browser, it is showing this UI. So from where this UI is being rendered. Now, to show you that which HTML file is being rendered in the browser in order to show this UI, what I will do is I will right click and I will say view page source. So here you can see the page source which is being rendered in order to show this UI. Okay, so just look at the content here. Let me increase the font size here. Okay, so this HTML here, it is coming from index.html file. And to go to index.html file, you can open this source folder. In there, you will see this index.html file. Okay, and you will see the same content here. Okay, so this content is what we are seeing here when we are viewing the source code of this web page. Right, now here you will also see some extra things like you'll also see these scripts which have been added here. But these scripts are not there in the index.html file. Apart from that, everything is same. So this HTML content is also available here when we are viewing the page source. All right, so we know that when we are running our Angular project in the browser, index.html file is getting loaded and it is being rendered. Now the next question which will come to your mind is from where these scripts are coming? Well, these scripts are coming from Angular CLI. So basically, when we run this ng serve command, what it does is it first compiles our project, then it creates some bundles. So these bundles basically, these five bundles, and then it inject these bundles in the index.html file. So these are the scripts which you will see here. You see runtime.js, polyfills.js, styles.js, vendor.js and main.js. So these are the five script files which have been injected in the index.html file. And these script files have been created by this ng serve command. They have been bundled and they have been injected in our index.html file of Angular project. I hope it is clear. Now, the next question which will come to your mind is, in the UI, we have so many things rendered, but in the HTML file, I only see this app root and this app root is not even an HTML element. Then what is this app root? And when we are using this app root, how it is rendering this UI? Now, just to show you that this app root is what is rendering this UI. Let me go back to VS code and let me remove this app root from here. So I will simply cut it from here. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the browser. Let me reload the page. And now you will see the page is blank. But if I go back and if I bring back that app root, if I save the changes now, then you will see 
that that UI is back. So it is this app root which is rendering this UI when we are running our Angular project. Now let's try to understand what this app root actually is. This app root here, it is basically rendering a component. Here it is rendering an app component. Now we will talk about components in great detail in our coming lectures. But for now, just understand that when we are using this app root, like an HTML element here, it is going to render a component. Now, which component it is rendering here? It is rendering app component. And to see the app component, you see this app folder. If I expand this here, you will see that we have five files app component.css, app component.html, app component.spec.ts, and app component.ts file. We also have this app modules.ts file, but it is not part of app component. Okay, we will talk about this app module.ts file later in this course, but for now, just understand that a component consists of four main files the TypeScript file. So, this.ts is an extension of TypeScript file. So, we have a TypeScript file, we have an HTML file, we have a CSS file. And we also have this spec.ts file. Now, the spec.ts file is not important at this point of time. Basically, in this spec.ts file, we write the unit tests for testing our component. Okay, but a component has mainly three files app component.ts, app component.html, and app component.css. In these four files, the most important file is this app component.ts file. This is a TypeScript file, and in there, you will have a component class. In this case, the component class name is app component. And if you notice, this app component class have been decorated with this component decorator. Again, we will talk about decorators in great detail in our coming lectures. But for now, just understand that when we create a component, first we create a class. In this case, the class name is app component. And we need to decorate that class with this at component decorator in order to make that class a component class. And to this at component decorator, here we are passing an object. And in this object, you will see we have a selector which is app root. So it is the same app root which we are using here. So for a component class, when we specify a selector, the value of that selector can be used as an HTML element. And that's what we are doing here. We are using the value of this selector, this app root like an HTML element. Now, when we use a selector like this, in that case, what it is going to do is, in place of this selector, it is going to render the template which is associated with that selector. In this case, with this selector, this template is associated. Now, this template here, we are simply calling it template URL because to this, we are assigning a path, the path of the HTML file, so in this case, wherever we will use this app root, there the content of this HTML file will be rendered. Now, where is this HTML file present? So in the same app folder, you will see that we have this app component.html. And in this app component.html, we have some HTML and CSS. So it is this HTML and CSS which is getting rendered in the UI when we are using this app root like an HTML element. Okay. So here we have a selector. We are using that selector like an HTML element. For this selector, we have an associated template. In this case, that template is app component.html file. So wherever we will use this selector like an HTML element, there the content of this HTML file will be rendered. So in the UI currently, this HTML is being rendered. And that's why the UI looks like this. But if I go ahead and if I delete everything from this HTML and if I add some new HTMLs here, here let's add an H2 element and here let's say welcome to Angular. Okay, a simple H2 element. Let me save the changes now. And now if I go to the web page, you will see that H2 element rendered in the web page. Now, here one thing you need to understand is here we are writing static HTML and for writing static HTML we don't need a framework like angular we use a framework like angular in order to generate dynamic contents right so we don't use angular for generating static content we use it for generating dynamic content 
So how can we generate dynamic content using Angular in this case? So let's say instead of welcome to Angular, I want to say welcome to eCart. Okay, that's our project name. So here either we can say eCart or we can generate that content dynamically. For that, let's go to our app component class. In there, we have a property called title, which is currently assigned with Angular eCart. So if I go to app component.html and here if I say welcome to and then if I use a double set of curly braces like this and in there I simply specify title here the value of this title property will be rendered. Now what is the value of this title property? It is angular eCart. So in place of this angular eCart will be rendered. If I save the changes, if I go back to the browser, you will see now it says Welcome to Angular eCart. So in this way, we are generating dynamic content. Whenever we will change the value of this title property, for example, instead of Angular eCart, if I say eCart, if I save the changes, if I go back to the browser, you see, now it says Welcome to eCart. So now we are generating the content dynamically. And this concept here is called as data binding. So basically, we are binding this title property in our HTML using these double set of curly braces. And don't worry, we are going to talk about data binding and component in great detail in our coming lectures. So basically, Angular allows us to mix static HTML code with dynamic things we want to output in the code. So this is a very simple change we have made in our Angular project right now, but we are going to do a lot of stuff in our coming lectures. Now, one thing which I want you to remember is that in the very first lecture, we learned that we use Angular for creating single page applications. That means when we run an Angular application, only a single HTML file will be loaded in the browser and that will be rendered by the browser. Whenever we navigate around in the Angular application, only the content of that HTML file will change. The HTML file itself will not change. It will always remain same. And that single HTML file which gets loaded in the browser when we run our Angular application is this index.html file. Okay. And in the future lectures, when we will implement the routing in our Angular application, that time you will see that when we are navigating to different URLs, the HTML page will remain the index.html file, but the content will change dynamically. And that content will be changed by JavaScript. Now, here you might say that you're saying that the content will be changed by JavaScript, but we are not even using JavaScript in our Angular application. Then how JavaScript is going to change the content? Well, keep in mind that the TypeScript code gets compiled to JavaScript code. So we write our code in TypeScript, but ultimately when the code is compiled, that TypeScript code will be converted to JavaScript and that JavaScript will change the content dynamically. All right, so for now, this should be it from this lecture. We are going to add more content in our Angular application. Currently, we have added only one H2 element, but we are going to add more HTML contents in our web page and we are going to make it look nicer and dynamic. But for this lecture, this should be enough. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.